Well, hello, everybody. Hi, everyone. We're back. Did you miss us? <laughs> well, we had some issues with my Facebook profile. Someone hacked into my account. Um, and actually, they still have control of my account. We're using uh, my wife's account. <laughs> yeah, sad. But I'm working on it, and we did miss being with you guys uh, so much. It was... Uh, well, it still is an honor and a privilege just to share this time with you. But uh, welcome to uh, Zion Prayer. And we're so glad to be connecting with you again. Just for those of you who are connecting for the first time, this is a Zion Worship Center Hour of Prayer. We're here to uh, uh, lift up and take your concerns. Uh, to the throne of God, where you can find grace and mercy to help you in your time of need. Mm -hmm. So, my name is Alan. And I'm Lilia. And we are the Evangelists and Pastors at Zion Worship Center, where Israel and Ro Rosie Munoz are the senior pastors. So, welcome, welcome to our, our hour of power, our hour of prayer. Yes, welcome. So I hope you guys have had an enjoyable week so far. I know the kiddos are going back to school. And uh, I know there's a lot of, you know, apprehension and concern with this uh, coronavirus and kids going back to school. But uh, just remember who's in control. God is in, is in control of everything. He is our protector. Wow. You know, so don't stress out about it. Just pray over your kids as they go out the door and they'll be safe from all harm and all danger. Yes. So thank you, my sisters, for connecting with this. Maribel and Ramirez and Gloria Munoz. God bless you. Thank you for connecting with us. Amen. We're back. <laughs> we're back. So, we're back. So we're back with you on Tuesday nights. So. We really missed you guys, so we're we're, yeah. we're we're happy to be back with you. In this heat. It is truly hot. It's very hot. <laughs> really hot. Did it say 119 in no, your car? 107. Oh, 107. 107. Yeah. So isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy yeah. for California? <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you for connecting uh, Melina Cortez and, and Tadi Quinal. Mm -hmm. Great to see you. Man. Great to see you guys. Great yes. to see you guys. So, yeah, we we're just sharing with everyone that uh, we know the kids are going back to school and it's probably a little bit of a stressful time and getting them used to going to school instead of just turning on their computer or tablet and connecting that way, getting used to going back into the classroom and mm -hmm riding the school bus or being dropped off or walking. It's truly a, a new experience because we haven't been doing it for a very long time. But Not only that, having to wear a mask. The yeah. kids having to wear a mask, I can't, I can't imagine, especially for the little kindergartners and first graders and second. And they're so little, you know, they're not, I can, I can just imagine them pulling their masks off, you know, and and driving the teachers crazy because you know their teachers are having to constantly tell them put your mask on put your mask on so i know it's tough all the way around for everybody exactly it is so it's tough but god's gonna see us through yes. this whole situation yes he is he's gonna protect us he's gonna take care of us he's gonna lead us and guide us and in, in in the right path you know it's just like uh i don't know uh how many of you were, were there with us on Sunday at the service? It was truly a unique service. That we had the uh, one of the bishops come from Oklahoma uh -huh. and give an, an inspiring evangelistic kind of message to, to reach out to those who did not know Jesus. And it was an amazing sight when he gave the invitation. And yes. so many people came up, you uh -huh. know? Because at that moment they didn't, they weren't sure, and it was their opportunity to make sure, yeah. and it was truly a glorious experience in the fact that people made decisions to give Jesus their life. Yes, it was awesome. Give Jesus a chance. Mm -hmm. 
So which is what we do when we accept Jesus, we're giving him a chance mm -hmm. in our lives and we realize that we do need a savior. And um, you know, it's it's a decision that we will never regret when we do accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And um, I think praise and worship was really good too on Sunday. You know, the the words and the, and the songs were just beautiful. Mm -hmm. And they made you think about God's goodness and his presence and allowed you to, because you know, that's, that's their thing. Praise and worship, they're supposed to usher people into God's presence. Yes. And I think they did a beautiful job also, you know, with the, those beautiful songs that they chose mm -hmm. that allowed us to uh, go into God's presence. Yes, the other side. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I was feeling oh. much going to the throne. The song just yeah. led us to the throne, you know. They're beautiful. And it, and we just ended the song, ended the service on one of uh -huh. my favorite Israel Hutin songs. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Yeah. People from every generation uh -huh. and tongue, from generation to generation. It's just a beautiful, we kind of ended on a high. You know how sometimes you come into church and you just kind of, you need to get filled up because this week was really hard. You just made it. And then to end, to experience a service like we did on Sunday and then to end it singing that song was just, it was wonderful. It was just, it was awesome. So uh, we just wanted to share that with you in case you missed it. You know, it was recorded on Facebook, but it was a great experience to see all those people up at the front of the church yeah. making decisions, giving their hearts uh -huh. to the Lord, which is the whole reason why we go to church anyway. And it's yes. the whole reason why we serve God anyway. So it was really exciting to see it in your, in, 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 with your own eyes and to experience it, you know. And we were able to pray for a young man to accept Jesus as his Lord and Savior and... Um, it truly is a, a beautiful experience when you think about, you know, the decision that they've made and when you think about, you know, how the word says that God's angels rejoice with with uh, them, you know, with us, with with you when you've accepted Jesus as they're excited. Yes. God's angels are excited because that's one more person coming into heaven, you know, to to be with them. And so um, it was a really, really a good experience. I always love it, you know, and I get a chance to usher people into God's throne room and allowing them to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. It's a life changer. It it's really awesome. is. And, and, and with that in mind, that's what our whole, our pastor is leading us into this whole evangelistic kind of teaching uh, for this for this time. And he kind of shared with me that's the direction he wants to go for the for the remainder of this year. Uh -huh. So we need to keep that in our hearts and our minds that we are his witnesses. We are to reach those who are lost with that saving knowledge of yes. Jesus Christ and to lead them to the throne so they can make that decision. Okay. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, Tavi sorry. said something. I can't read it. And then, you know, if, if you feel like you can't physically tell someone about Jesus, you can always pray for them. I remember one time sitting at the gas station by myself in the car and this person walked in front of my car and I felt like the Lord said, pray for them. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't even know this person, but okay, I'll pray for them. And then I felt like God was telling me, see, you never know who's, pay never know who's praying for you. Exactly. You know, so if you have a hard time, you know, telling someone physically about Jesus, pray for them because you're helping pave the way for that one person that comes along to tell them about Jesus. Exactly. So. And I know some of you watching are some prayer warriors. You know, that's your gift. So don't sit on your gift. Can you see what, what Tavi's saying right oh, there? She said, Quiero dar gracias a Dios por un joven. I want to thank God for a young man que puse en oración. Tenía cancer, pero está bien. Wow, hallelujah. Uh, Taide Conal said that she just wanted to give God the glory because she had put a young man that had cancer on the prayer list, and now he's fine. Awesome. He has See? no cancer at all in his body. The, hallelujah. The Thank you, Jesus. of prayer. Hallelujah. Thank the you, Father. Of prayer. Hallelujah. See? We can't, exciting. 
We can't uh, sit on our calling. Hallelujah. Because God has a calling for each and every one of us, Hallelujah. each and every believer. There's a calling on your life. There's a purpose to your life. Yes. You know, and we need to we need to fulfill that service. We all we're all different parts, but mm -hmm. we're all one body. As, as as Paul articulates or says in in the eighth chapter of Romans, we're we're all a part of the body of Christ, and we all yes. have a purpose, and we all have have a gift that we need to exercise. Yes, to bring glory to God's name. Amen. And, okay. and Thaiva is uh, actually a prayer warrior. She loves to pray. You know, she's part of the the prayer ministry at our church. So I'm excited. Yes. You know, for these news. It's awesome. It's exciting news. Yes. Thank you, Father. Well, thank you so much once more and again for connecting with us. We were kind of just talking about the events of this past Sunday. Uh, but I, I have a little short word of encouragement for you guys. And it's on the um, subject of evangelism. Because this, this is where we're at in our service uh, at Zion and where we're going to. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who are joining us for the first time, this is just a simple word of encouragement. For when God calls you to service, we need to accept his calling and not walk in fear uh, or, or, or to be afraid to walk in what God's call us to do. We, we all know what God's call us to do because it's in our heart and it's in our minds. But sometimes we're just afraid to do it because of what other people would think, you know. So, but all my life, uh, I've come to this point where I don't really don't care what other people think. If God's called me to do it, I'm going to do it. So, uh, if you were there in service on last Wednesday, I talked about uh, Moses and the burning bush. We were familiar with that story with Moses and the burning bush. How. Mm -hmm what his mother had to go through, how she had to save his save him from being killed because all the boys were being killed. She had to hide him for three months and then that that then she had to uh when she couldn't hide him anymore, she had to build this this little basket. We would call it a wicker basket. She just weaved it with with, with reeds and, 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 and some tar. They called it pitch and she put her son in it and she sent them down uh, on the Nile River, and she put literally mm -hmm. took her child mm -hmm. and put him in God's hands to make it waterproof. The yeah, the pitch yeah. to make it waterproof so it'll mm -hmm. float. Yeah, but she put her child in that in that <sighs> basket and then sent him down down the river. Okay, mm -hmm. the Nile River, and and she was totally out of control. And the point I neglected to make last Wednesday was this. That's what we have to do sometimes in our life. We try to control everything, right? Because that's our nature. We have to be in control. We have to be, we don't say control, but we say responsible. We have to be responsible for everything. But sometimes we have to give that responsibility and control over to the Lord so he can do what he wants to do in our lives to bring glory to his name. We can't control and be responsible for everything. We were never designed to be that way. We're designed to be connected to God so he can, so he can communicate to us what he needs us to do so we can be blessed by his presence in our lives. So what Jacobed had to do was release her child into God's control, into his hands, and send him down the river. And I don't have time to cover the rest of that story, but we know that Moses was raised by Pharaoh's daughter, and she he was nursed by his own mom. And, and, and as Moses grew up, he grew in the knowledge and, and, and the ways of the Egyptians. But at some point, he ended up to where the story begins in our text from last week in the desert with Jephthah, his father-in-law, because he married his daughter. And he's out there in the wilderness, in the desert, taking care of sheep, probably kind of feeling a little homesick from the palace 
but he had to have that desert experience to prepare him to evangelize the people of Israel and to help them get across the desert to the promised land. And this is where we find him. And I wanted to bring about this one point because what our pastor wanted us to think about in terms of evangelism is this phrase, do something, if not me, then who? If not then, then when? You know, we, 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 we sometimes we kind of procrastinate and put things off and we miss the blessing of God in our lives. So here in the story in chapter three, we find Moses with the sheep and he sees this bush that's burning, but it's not being burned up, okay? It's not being consumed. So the first point I made last week was the call will not consume you. If you are following the call of God in your life, God's gonna give you everything that you need if you trust him, if you trust him, if you trust him, he's going to give you everything that you need to fulfill that calling so you will not be consumed by what he has for you to do. Okay, so that was the first point I wanted to, I made last week. The second point was, was this, you must decide to turn and see God. So at some point, the, Moses was so captivated by the fact that the bush was on fire and it wasn't being consumed, it wasn't being burned up, that he said to himself, I've got to see what this is all about. So he, he turned from what he was doing and he looked at the bush. And at that point, when he turned and looked at the bush, that is when God spoke and called him. And that's what I mean mean by the call of God in your life. When you stop being focused on all this negativity and trying to control everything in your life and to keep every little thing in place, you're going to wear yourself out by doing that. But when you stop, when you just stop for a minute and you see what God is, what God's got going on, for a, to, to coin a phrase, if you just stop and you look and you see what God is really doing in your life, at that moment, God's going to talk to you and say, look, this is what I have for you. He's going to say, look, he's going to call your name. You know why? Because God knows your name. You know why he knows your name? You know how he knows your name? Because he created you in his own image and he knows who you are. So he's going to, he, just like he called out to Moses, he said, Moses, Moses, he's going to call out your name. He's going to say Gloria. He's going to say Martha. He's going to say Alan and Maria. I am the Lord, your God. And we're going to turn and say, look, here I am. And that is what God is waiting for, for you to do. Exactly what he said in the text here. And uh, where is it? Because I want to read this exactly. He says um, in verse four, when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called him out of the bush. God wants to call out your name. And um, and he said, um, I'm sorry, I lost my place. God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Okay, he said, here I am. And that's what God is waiting for us to do is to turn and to recognize who he is. What is the point for God calling out to us? It's a very fundamental principle in Christianity. It's all about relationship, okay? It's all about relationship. God wants to have a relationship with you. This is the other point I, I, I didn't neglect it to bring out. He wants to have a relationship with you. At that moment, God is developing a relationship with Moses because he has a plan and a purpose for his life. And God has a plan and a purpose for your life. He says, here I am. Then he said, do not come near. Take your sandals off of your feet 
for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And I said, my last point, you can walk on holy ground because God is your father, because he was, he's establishing a relationship here. So what is the point with the sandals? Because sometimes we've got to take some things off. The, 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 the point in, 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 in the... Um, uh, um, can't think of the word. In, in, in the custom, it's a customary thing to take off your shoes. My wife, tradition, in, in, in that culture, out of respect, out of reverence for, for, for the authority to take off your shoes. My wife won't let us wear shoes in our house because the no. ground outside is disgusting. But in this yeah. point, it is, it is out of reverence and custom. But let me, let me kind of... Let me kind of attach that to a, 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 a Christian principle. You know, in, in Hebrews, it says we have to take off those things that easily beset us and distract us and cause us not to connect and have a relationship with God. Sometimes I want you to take this physical, I want you to take this physical principle and custom of taking off the shoes so you can get closer in, uh, out of geography out of distance from the presence of God to, to make a symbolic gesture uh, to take some things off that distract and to get in the way of your relationship with God. Because the whole principle here is for God to establish a relationship with Moses. It is the same principle with you and I. We have to take off some things so that we can have a relationship with God. If it's disconnecting from social media, don't do it now. But if it's disconnecting from social media or taking a break from watching TV or taking a break from going out to dinner or taking a whatever it is that you have to do to get that relationship with God so it can prepare you for your next level with him, do it. Take the shoes off. Take it off. So you can have that relationship with God. And the next thing, what God does with Moses, now that he has his attention and he's building this relationship with Moses, because you have to remember, Moses had no relationship with God at this point. He knew of him, but he didn't have that connection with him. Did you get that? Did you catch that? There are a lot of people that know of God and know about God. God, but they don't know God. At this point, right here, Moses know, is beginning to understand who God is in his life. So God proceeds to give him a little bit more information as I bring this to a close. And he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. All family with Moses, all relatives of Moses. He's the God of his forefathers. He's the God of his relatives. He's telling him this because I am also your God, Moses. And Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. We don't have to be afraid. God is our father. Just like Irie Lewis was my physical father, God is my spiritual father. He's the creator of this universe. He loves me. He has his, the best interest for me. He wants to bless me, bless me going in, bless me coming out, blessing everything that my hand touches. That is the same blessing that God has for you. But we have to accept our calling. And this is the point that our pastor wants to get across to all of us, that Zion Worship Center in the city of Marino Valley has a calling to evangelize the community. And the only way that we can begin to understand what that calling is, is that we have to develop that relationship with God so that God can speak to us, so we can understand what our giftings are, so when we all come together, it's going to be a phenomenal and an explosive experience, an explosive revelation, an explosive 
uh, what was that when all churches come to revival? That's the word I'm looking for. It's going to be a revival experience in the city of Moreno Valley. And they're going to be saying, what's going on at Zion? God is there and he's speaking to all of us in the same way that he spoke to Moses. So we can go out to the community and speak to the community and revive the community with the power, salvation, experience of Jesus Christ. That's what I have for you tonight. God bless you. Amen. So with that in mind, do we have any prayer requests? We, we have some that have been sent by our pastor. So if you guys have a prayer request or a praise report like our sister right here, put it in the chat. So we can share it, so we can we can we can offer up thanksgivings and and praises to our God, who is more than able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we ask, or we can even hope for God is able. So put it in the chat if you have a prayer request, praise report. Put it in there so we can acknowledge it, come together and pray, and and or offer up a thanksgiving for what God has done for you in your life. So at this time, go ahead and do that. We'll be looking for them. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you a few minutes to do that. And my wife and I were with my, and I'll just share this little short story with you. My wife and I were with my mom the other day. Couple, last couple of days and the last time we were because she's she's been through a, a lot and uh, she has to go in for uh, one more procedure on her remaining leg her left leg she got a little sore and that's not healing so when I go they want to go in there and just do a little angiogram to open up the blood vessel in, uh, in her left leg she's got good blood flow um, but she lost her right one down up just below the knee. And uh, she's been in a lot of pain. So we've been spending a little bit of time with her. And uh, we're watching the uh, closing uh, ceremonies of the Olympics. I don't know how many of you had the opportunity to watch the Olympics. But it was a beautiful display of the culture uh, of Japan. They had all, all kind of different numbers, diff different uh, um uh, displays of talent, drums and opera songs, and it was very unique experience. And even in the light of COVID, there was no one in the stands. Uh, um, but they had this one uh, musical, kind of an orchestral kind of an orchestra kind of uh, uh, event where they had a main orchestra. You know, they had the the woodwinds, the violins, the cellos, the brass in one location. And they had these uh, other musicians on another part of the planet playing piano. And another part, they were playing a different instrument. It was just how they coordinated all those different uh, videos on live TV from all over the planet was just miraculous how they could do that I was commenting on I don't know how they're making this happen just trying to operate this Facebook just between the two of us is is more than a notion but to control all those different events all over the world and 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 the music it seemed like it was just in perfect timing even though they're in different locations all over the planet it was it was amazing so we were watching that with my mom, mm -hmm. just encouraging her, spending some time with her, and just sharing the moment. So, well, as you continue to um, put your prayer request in, we're going to begin to pray over these uh, requests that have been sent in on the Marino Valley Marino Valley page. Uh -huh. The first one is from Beda, 
and she's praying for a smooth transition into the new school year. As I as I began our discussion, I know I, I, I commented on the fact that the kids are going back to school and it could be a little stressful for the kids and stressful for the parents. And we have a couple of requests for that. Um, so we're going to pray for that right now. Father God, we just lift up uh, Betha's request about the kids going back to school. We ask, Father God, that it would just be a peaceful transition from home back to the classroom. We lift up the teachers and the principals, Father God. We lift up the crossing guards. We lift up the bus drivers, because I've been a bus driver. We lift up the security guards, campus personnel and staff, the cafeteria workers, Father God. We ask, Father God, that all things will work together for the good to those who love you and who are called according to your purposes. We ask, Father God, in these, all these things regarding a, a peaceful transition to school and an awesome and successful school year for the children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to pray for Ines. And she wants us to pray for her finances. Um, there's a verse in the Bible that talks about God supplying all our needs. It says, My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And um, God's pretty much trying to tell us in that verse that we are to trust in him for our finances and like we have to trust in him for everything else. Um, I've been in situations, you know, where I feel like it's not going to work out. And then God miraculously sends somebody, works it out eventually, and my miracle um, came. So I just wanted to encourage you to know that God will supply all of your needs. God didn't say some of your needs. He said all of your needs according to his riches and glory by yes. Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father. By Christ Jesus, meaning because of what Jesus has died on the cross, we can talk to God through his son, Jesus Christ. And that's why we say in Jesus' name, because we can do that through Jesus. And so I just lift up um, my sister, Ines. If you are born again, you are my sister in the Lord, and I lift you up. Um, I pray that God pours down an extra measure of yes. faith into your heart. I ask that, um, Father, that you uh, pour that peace that passes understanding in Ines's mind that she will know that everything is going to work out for the good of her and her family, that she will steadfastly hold on to you and your promises, mm -hmm. knowing that you are her faithful God yes. and that you will show yourself strong. mightily and strong. We mm -hmm. thank you, Father, in advance. In Jesus' name. Amen. Laura, my health, my finances, my kids, and my family. We lift, Father God, we just come lifting up Laura to you. She's asking for uh, your supernatural and abundant intervention in her life, your grace and your mercy upon her finances and her family. We ask, Father God, that you would just move in a mighty way in Laura's life, that she might be an example of the goodness of God. In Jesus' name Amen. we pray. In Jesus' name. And I will um, pray for Gabriel. Gabriel wants to pray for, it says, our enemies. Um, God talks about, in his word, about our enemies. He says that our enemies are not carnal, but it's a spiritual warfare that we fight on a daily basis. Yes, uh, whether we think so or not, it's very real. The spiritual realm is very real. And in that realm... You have Satan and his demons fighting against the people of God. But at the same time, you know, God told us that we have authority over those demons and we have authority over Satan. So there's nothing to fear or worry about. And so I pray for um, Gabriel and whatever enemies that he's talking about, 
Father, I ask that you reveal yourself in a mighty way to him and that you let him know what your promises are through your word so that he can stand his ground and that he can stand strong against the enemies through the name and power of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Tracy, the kids, as they're going back to school, this is another uh, request for our kids going back to school. So, Father, we're asking for your continued favor as the kids transition to school. Mm -hmm. We are honoring Tracy's request by bringing this to your throne. Father, we ask that you continue to be with the teachers, the administration, and everyone involved in this new academic year. In Jesus' name in we Jesus pray. Name. And don't forget that um, every child has um, their own guardian angel that walks with them from the moment they wake up until the time they go to sleep. God has ordained uh, a guardian angel for everyone. And so your child has his very own guardian angel protecting him or her from all hurt, harm, and danger. And we are to believe that and um, pray that over them. As before they leave their home, your, your house, you know, just tell them, don't forget your guardian angel is with you and he's going with you wherever you go and you will be safe today in Jesus' name. And so I just wanted to let you guys know that. Um, Number six. Yeah. Mar Maria, for my daughter who is a firefighter wow. and is in Northern California fighting the big fires. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, we just wanted to thank your your daughter for, for her service. For her service. <laughs> Definitely. A very dangerous um, job. We had a friend that was, that was a firefighter, <clears throat> and he was telling us, uh, you know, about it and everything. And it's not it's not an easy thing to do. It's uh, they're literally putting their lives in danger. Um, so, but you have to remember that God is in control, and that God is with your your daughter, and He will never leave her nor forsake her, mm -hmm. and He goes with her wherever she goes, and He is taking care of her. And so, Father, we just lift up um, Maria's daughter to you. Father, I thank you for Psalms 91 protection upon her. Thank you, Father, yes, that Father. She, you hold her in the palm of your hand, protecting her wherever she goes, Father. And uh, thank you, Father, that you will return her to her mom safely. And I also pray for all the other firefighters that are there uh, risking their lives. Yes. Father, we lift them up to you. And we're believing that you are going to take care of them also, yes, Father, Lord. from all hurt, harm, and danger. We thank you, Father, for it in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Clayton was asking for a, a prayer. He was recently diagnosed with ALS. I forget what it is, but, but I know it's a degenerative disease. So we're going to lift him up right now in prayer. Father God, we come lifting up Clayton. We're yes, asking, Lord. Father God, that you would intervene in his life. Uh, uh, your word tells us that we are the call upon the elders of the church and we are to lay hands so we're reaching out over the airspace and and lifting up and and our and our hands and in, in symbolic and in symbolism and just laying hands Amen. upon him father yes. god we ask that you would send your guardian yes. angels of, of protection that your healing power will be upon his life in the name of jesus mm -hmm. christ that you know jesus. all the intricacies of this disease to what is what is affecting if it's his muscles or his nervous system i can't remember exactly what it is but father you know you know the diagnoses you know the problems we're asking in the name of jesus we're standing in the gap for him father god we're asking that you would move in a mighty way because He's acknowledging that he can't do this on his own, but he needs the power of yeah, Jesus yeah, Christ Jesus in his Jesus. life. And we're yeah. asking, Father God, that you would move in a mighty way and heal his body yes, from Lord. all sickness and all disease. Yes, in Lord. Jesus' Jesus name. name, we believe it's Amen. done. Yes, Amen. Lord. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Believe it and receive it. Yes. In Jesus' name. Um. 
Marie said that she wants says that she wants prayer for her family and Auntie Sue. There's a lot going on. Father, I just lift up um, Marie's family to you. Father, I know that you care about every single person um, yes. on this earth. You care about their well-being. You care about their happiness. You care about their finances. You care about everything that concerns us, Father. And Father, I just lift them up to you, believing that you will uh, reveal yourself to them in a mighty way yes. so that they will see who you are and what a great God that we serve, Father. And um, I lift up her Auntie Sue yes. to you, Father, also that you reveal yourself to her in a mighty way and that she will see for herself that you are who you say that you are. And you said in your word that whatever is, is impossible with man is possible with you. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you in advance in the for the good and mighty things that are going to take place in this family. In Jesus' name we pray. We thank you in advance. Amen. Amen. Zara, for a friend who just lost her husband to COVID, please include both their families as they go through this tragic loss. So, Father, we're just lifting mm -hmm. up both families yes, uh, that, that um, Zara is is asking for prayer for. Uh, they're currently walking through this valley of death, mm -hmm. Father God, but we hope that they understand that there's something that you are on the other side. So we're asking, Father God, that through this mm -hmm. experience that they will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. We ask Amen. that your peace will be upon both families that passes all understanding that a that it will guard their hearts and their minds through this experience. And that this experience will bring hope of the eternal, which is you, that you become real in their wives the same way you became real in Moses' life. And that relationship will develop and grow in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Um... Let's Farah. see, Farah. She said, I just lost my dad. I want peace and patience in my family. I can um, certainly understand, oh, yes, what you're going through. Uh, my mom went on to be with the Lord about a year and some months ago, and it's still really hard for me. Um, you know, it's a part of the mourning process. You know, um, I don't know if you know this, but the shortest verse in the Bible is, it says, Jesus wept. Because Jesus knew what it was like to lose a loved one, and he literally cried. And so, um, it's not easy, but God can carry you through this circumstance, and he can wrap his loving arms around you and allow you to experience that yes. peace <coughs> and understanding that Jesus. you need for this time. And so, Father, I just uh, yes, lift up Farah to you, Father, Farah. I lift her up to you, Father. I ask that you re reveal yourself yes. mightily in her life. I ask that you wrap your loving arms around her, letting, letting her know that you are there with her, Father, and that you will never leave her nor forsake her and that you love her oh so much, Father. And one more thing, uh, Far, I wanted to let you know that um, if you're looking for patience, a good way to receive patience is to get into God's word. Mm -hmm. If you start reading his word, God will fill your heart with those things that you need. And um, that's not a lie, that's the truth. You know, God does that. And not only that, the more we get to know God, the more we understand how things work in our lives and the more we understand how, um, you know, He works and experience just the way, just who He is, just to experience Him. And, you know, that's the key is uh, reading His Word or singing songs to him. God loves the praises of his people. That's yes. what the word says. And so I encourage you to 
start reading the word, start reading one of the gospels. You know, the first uh, uh, book in the New Testament is Matthew. The gospels are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those are the gospels. And they talk about Jesus when he walked here on this earth. So I encourage you to do that. Mm -hmm. um, get to know him and God will, will fill you <clears throat> with the patience and the understanding that you need. Amen. Amen. Shannon, yes, a smooth transition and a new school year. And my little one does better this weekend with kindergarten. God bless <laughs> those kindergarten teachers. I love teachers. that age in kindergarten. <laughs> God bless those kindergarten teachers. Yes. And they, they need a big blessing. So, <laughs> Father in heaven, we come lifting up uh, Shannon and, and her, her um, little one. And we ask that he have a great experience uh, in school Amen. with his teachers and his new friends. Mm -hmm. We ask, Father God, that you would continue to be with the teachers and the teachers' aides and the lunch staff and all the principals, the counselors, everyone, Father God, mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 And don't forget to prepare prepare your, your, your little one with God's <clears throat> word. Mm -hmm. You know, have him ready for when he goes out there in that into that real world. Let him let him know and understand who he is in Christ. Yes. You know, tell him the good news about Jesus, and you know, read the Word with him. And get those um those children's Bibles. Those are awesome to read to the kids. And this because you know how it's it's pretty bad out there, but you know if you root and ground your child in in God and God's presence and who He is, um. Your, your child will, will be just fine out there. Yep. Amen. Amen. I pray for both of these, Larry and Firewater. Oh, Larry and Firewater. Mm -hmm. uh, it says that they want prayer for, it says, for me to stop drinking. Um, Father, I just uh, lift up Larry and Firewater to you. <sighs> Father, I... Um, know that you said in your word that you are the God that heals. Yes. You said, I am the God that heals thee. So, Father, once again, we lift them up to you, uh, believing that you will reveal yourself to them as they call out to you, as they reach out to you, Father, for deliverance, as they call out to you because they need your help, Father, and these aren't the first cases where um, two people need your help. There have been many, many people many. and many testimonies where people have said, God, help me to stop drinking. He helped me to stop smoking or whatever, you know, thing that you're addicted to. God has helped them. All you have to do is reach out to God and believe and receive. Yes, Lord. And so, Father, we thank you that these two people will pray, that they will get on their knees and ask you to help them and to heal them, Father. We thank you, Father, in advance for um, what you're going to do in their lives. And Larry and Firewater, we would love for you guys to uh, get a hold of us again and share your testimony. Yes, absolutely. Because I really believe that it's going to happen for you. Amen. In Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Uh, Marco, for all of our, of our kids to be safe this week and uh, as they start school, mm -hmm. a lot of parents, <laughs> their kids are going to school. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, trying to minimize the, uh, the transition because you're, I, I've been a school teacher for a long time. So I know... Uh, I know the anxiety when, when the school year starts. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and lift up Marco and, and his kids, Father God. Uh, they're getting ready to go off to school. And we ask, Father God, for your, for your presence, mm -hmm. your, your intervening presence, your peace on the situation. As the kids go off to school and the parents help their kids go off to school. Help the parents to understand that they are their child's first teacher they are the first example the child has in their life 
and help them to be a shining example, always admonishing them and teaching them their kids in the ways of the Lord so they know how to act when they go out to school. Thank you, Father God, you, Father. in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Once again, uh, their guardian angels are with them wherever they go. <clears throat> Amen. Um, uh, Stephanie. Stephanie. <clears throat> Stephanie says that her heart needs peace. Well, once again, we just wanted to share that scripture that says um, that God um, gives us the peace that passes understanding, the type of peace that we can't get physically here on earth. It's uh, a spiritual thing, receiving God's peace, because he's the one that creates that supernatural peace in, in our lives that causes us to think, wait a minute, why am I feeling so peaceful? Well, it's because God has given you that peace. Yep. And once again, you have to call out to God for that peace. You have to call out to him. Get on your knees. I always tell everyone, drop to your knees with your nose on the floor because that shows total humility mm -hmm. from a person. I've, that's worked for me so many times, time and time again, when I drop to my knees and put my nose to the floor and I tell the Lord, Father, I need you. And I'm telling you, God meets me where I'm at. So God will meet you where, where you're at, Stephanie, and he will fill you with that peace that you need. Just reach out to him and call on his name. Amen, in Jesus' name. Amen. Daniel, a new bear and council members dare to dream. Um, yes. Uh, we can also pray that God will move upon the hearts of, of who we have as well. I'm not diminishing your request, but prayer is always the answer. Okay. And um, so, Father in heaven, we're, we're we're honoring Daniel's prayer request. We ask, Father God, that that let Your will be done in this situation, Father God. Whatever the situation is with the mayor and the council members, we ask, Father God, that You would move upon their hearts hearts and minds to do what is right for the community, Father God. We ask, Father God, that you would just move in a mighty way in this situation. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. And Raquel said, um, good results with the doctor. Great school year for all the kiddos, staff, and teacher. Find our new forever, forever home. You want to take that one? Father in heaven, we're just lifting up Raquel, whatever the situation is with the doctor. We ask, yes. Father God, that it will be a good report. report. We're asking, Father God, for continued blessings upon this new academic school year mm -hmm. since it's on everybody's heart and yes, mind. Father. So we're continuing to pray for the teachers, mm -hmm. the, the administrators, the security guards, the bus drivers, the cafeteria workers the crossing guards, everybody, Father God, because we want our kids safe from all harm and all danger. We want uh, an environment where they feel safe so they can learn in the name of Jesus Christ. And Raquel's also asking for a forever home. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So we're asking, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you would lead her and guide her to Amen. that perfect place. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 And Jonathan said that he wants us to pray for him for a healthier life. Um, uh, you want to take that one? Jonathan, we lift, Father God, we're lifting up Jonathan. Father mm -hmm. God, we don't know what the uh, health situation is. Mm -hmm. But Father, we ask that you would uh, anoint his mind and his heart, Father God, so they might experience what a healthier life is is mm -hmm. whether it's uh, a food addiction or a drug addiction or alcoholism or or, or a toxic relationship we don't know what's going on in jonathan father god but you do so we're asking father god that your peace that will be upon his heart and his mind in jesus, jesus name amen. amen and julie is 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 anxious about something father god but your word tells us to be anxious for nothing but by everything through prayer and supplication let your requests be made known to god and 
then <laughs> the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus, who is our Lord. So Julia, that is our prayer for you. The God tells you don't be anxious for anything, but we are to bring our concerns to his throne. And at that point, Julia, you will find grace and mercy to help you when you need it. And then the peace, God's peace, will replace your anxiety and you will learn how to guard your heart and your mind through Jesus, who is your Lord. It's in his name we pray and Amen. ask it all. Amen. Amen. Find a friend that's a, a <clears throat> prayer warrior that you can call on and, and uh, have them pray with you on a daily basis if need be, you know? So that helps. Nora is asking for prayer. Marie and Alan Lutz are asking for prayer. Please pray for her mom. Oh, I lost it. Something. Please pray for my sister Barbara Alexa Calderon. Okay. <clears throat> Let's start with this one. We're going to start at the top and we're going to go down and then Lily's going to close us out. Okay. So we're lift, Father God, we just come lifting up uh, Maribel Ramirez and her family, Gloria Munoz and her family, Melina Cortez and her family, Father God, uh, Taidi Quanal and her family, <clears throat> Miguel and all the kids, lifting up Nora Gonzalez, Mm -hmm. and her family, Rebecca Miranda Mojica and her family, Maribel Ramirez, God bless you. We're lifting up your family right now. We're lifting up Martha, Father God, Alan and Maria Lutz, Father God, um, Nora, Father God. We're lifting up Irma right now, Father God, to you. Uh, Nora is asking for prayers for her fiance. He's having surgery. We're lifting up Nora right now, your fiance. Mm -hmm. We're asking that he would got that the that the, our Father God will guide the doctor's hands, and then everything will come out all right in Amen. Jesus' Jesus. name. We're lifting up Vilma, Jeanette Galvez, Father God, and her family. We're lifting up uh, Maria and Alan Lutz. They're asking for prayer for her mom. For her sister, Barbara Alexa Calderon, she's having surgery next week. We ask, Father God, that you would be in that operating room, yes, that you would guide the surgeon's hands, that you would heal Barbara from all sickness and disease in Jesus' name. We lift up Emma Giana and her family. We lift up Rosie Munoz and our pastor Israel Munoz mm -hmm. and the children. Uh, we lift up Robert and Wandy Orsadio, the girls, Tanya, Liddy, and Adri. We lift up, who am I missing? Uh, Israel's asking for our pastor's asking for protection for his mother in law who is oh, going yeah. to El Salvador Somewhere. tonight. Father God, we lift up yes. uh, Israel's mother in law who's yeah. traveling to El Salvador. We ask, Father God, that you would keep her safe from all harm and all danger on the trip there while she's there visiting, keep her safe from all harm and all danger and the entire family, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for Psalms 91 protection upon her, Father. Yes, Lord. Uh, uh, Alan and Maria Lutz asking for prayer for his dad. Luis, we ask Father God that you would be with uh, Luis, we ask him that you, that we ask Father God that you would 
keep him safe from all harm and all danger, and that you would heal him from all sickness and all disease in the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Name. We're continuing to lift up the children and the teachers, everyone that has anything to do with school starting over this next week. Father God, we ask that you would continue to make this a smooth and peaceful transition Amen. in Jesus', Jesus name. name. <clears throat> Rosie, you want to take that one, Leah? Pray for Zuleika's daughter, Emma. She broke her forearm and she's in a lot of pain. There's not much medicine. Oh, Father, we just lift uh, Zuleika's daughter, Emma, to you. Father, you know what she's going through. Father, we just ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that you touch her body from yes, the top Father. of her head all the way down to the tips of her toes, Father, and that you heal her, that you make, uh, you cause her yes, body Father. to feel better, Father, with less pain. Father, we're asking you in the name of your son, Jesus, we thank you in advance for the, a good result. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And uh, please pray, please pray for my, for husband, Alan, he's having shoulder pain. So we're lifting up Alan right now, Father God, we're reaching out through Amen. this airspace, yes. laying hands on your shoulder. And we're Amen. asking Father God for a healing on that shoulder. You know what's going on there. We're asking that you would, for a miraculous healing touch on his shoulder so that he can feel no more pain. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ, Father, we pray. Receive Amen. the healing of the Lord, my brother, tonight in, in Jesus', Jesus name. name. Thank you, Father. Jesus name. In the name of Jesus. And Father in heaven, as, I, as we bring this prayer to a close, we're lifting up our soldiers, uh, our men and women who are serving around the globe, around the planet. We're lifting up our leaders in yes, the state Father. and in Washington, D.C. We're lifting up our missionaries, Father God, who are serving all over the planet, proclaiming the name of Jesus Christ to all those who will listen and believe. We're lifting up all the preachers, the pastors, the evangelists, the teachers that are lifting up the name, Jesus Christ, who are, who are holding up that bloodstained banner and who are serving you in yes. every capacity, on every street corner, on every, in every ghetto, Father God, in every bodega, Father God, anywhere, Father God, we just keep them safe from all harm and all danger in Amen. Jesus' Jesus name. name. Thank you, Father. Lilia. Amen. Well, I guess it's that time. Um, I just wanted to say that if you haven't accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, now is the time. Uh, you know, the word says that Jesus is coming back to pick up, uh, which God calls it his bride. The, Bi the Bible calls us his children. He also calls us his bride. Uh, and Jesus is supposed to be the groom. But he will come back. We don't know the time or the hour which is what god's word says but he is going to come back to pick up his children or the people that have accepted jesus as his lord as their lord and savior and so if you haven't done so already i encourage you to just close your eyes right now and um say this after me say god i believe in you i believe that you sent your son jesus to die on the cross for me, a sinner. Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for dying on the cross for me, a sinner. Yes. Father, now God becomes your Father whenever you say those words. He can become your Heavenly Father. And so now you thank Him for sending His Son to die on the cross for you because He loves you so, so much. You can't imagine how much. He yes. loves you. And so receive this prayer by faith, knowing that now you are a born again Christian. You are born into the kingdom of God. And if Jesus were to return tonight, you have nothing to fear because 
you will be uh, caught up in the air with him and you will be going to, to uh, heaven to live with him forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And we thank you, Father, for the people that have accepted uh, your son, Jesus, as Lord and Savior. And Father, I just lift them up to you. I ask that you reveal yourself to them in a mighty way, Father. In Jesus' name, that they will feel your presence and your love, that they will be a new creation, like you said in your word. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, hey, if that's you, guess what? Welcome to the family of God. Amen. You've been born again, yes. and we want to hear from you. So direct message us. Our pastor wants to hear from you. Amen. Pastor Israel and Rosie, one day, they want to hear from you, that you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior Amen. and we want you to get connected we have a we have a gift for you so please come visit us at Zion Worship Center you don't have to be go to our church but we want you to go to a, a church, church. <laughs> where you can get fed yes. and grow into the things and knowledge of God. God that's right Amen. so we've come to the end of our service tonight yes. but uh, don't forget we have Wednesday night Bible study tomorrow at 7 p.m. We got uh, young adults Thursday. We got youth on Fridays, and we have our 10 a.m. Sunday morning service. So come through, come visit, come check us out. We'd love to see you there. Yes. God bless God you. God bless you, Anne. And remember <laughs> that Jesus, Jesus is, is Lord. Lord. Bye. Bye.